Thank you, Tim, and uh, thank you very much for coming this morning. I'm going to talk about open data and the future of mapping, a very provocative subject. Today, GIS is being successfully used at all levels of government, local government, state government, national agencies, and it's definitely making government more efficient and more, more effective. And it's at the same time resulting in huge volumes of data sets, data sets about cadastral data, about health, about transportation, about disasters. And increasingly, this geographic data is being made available through portals like data.gov. Many forces are affecting my world. Uh, they're the computing world and network world, like Tim and uh, the previous speaker talked about, are evolving to the mobile space. So we're in a mobile device. We're connected. At the same time, measurement, all kinds of geospatial measurement is occurring. Not only remote sensing and sensor networks, but also we're learning how to take crowdsourced information and georeference it and bring it into these same systems. Uh, and GIS software is evolving. It's moved from mainframes to minis to PCs to, to now to the internet and mobile devices as a platform. And it's getting much easier to be able to use. Um, and crowdsource information is coming back into these systems, making them come alive. And at the same time, geographic science is evolving. We're understanding patterns and relationships and processes by using geographic layers in various analytic ways. And finally, the subject of this talk, open data policies are making all of these reservoirs of data available and usable, making maps a kind of uh, platform for the future. The question is, can government data, this GIS data, be integrated, put together in some way, so that it's not just a patchwork quilt of everybody's individual efforts? Is it possible to think about a, a vision of a system which is a societal system where people can get into it and work with it and leverage all of these taxpayer investments, making geography and the science that it is associated with available to everyone for various applications? The answer, I think, is looking to the future is yes, but open data policies and just the data sharing are not enough to make this happen. We need to learn how to publish maps as shared services. We also need to learn how to integrate these maps using templates, templates that integrate authoritative source, and also systems for discovery and sharing these information sets by different participants. And finally, software, free software that's simple and easy to use, and also open tools for developers in the open source community to leverage and extend these services. And finally, full GIS has to be made available to the whole community. So I'm going to turn this over for a few minutes to Bernie Zukowski, my colleague, who's going to show some senses of what the future might be like with respect to these. Uh, and he's going to show some demos about a community base map first and, and then some other things. Bernie? Thanks, Jack. What I'd like to begin is uh, show you some of the work that we've been doing regarding collecting this community GIS data and making it more available for use. One of the ways that we've done that is by assembling these community base maps. And there are several of those. There's the world imagery base map. There's the world streets base map. And there's one that we'll focus on here today. This is the world topographic map. And this is a unique map because it's composed primarily from government sources. And these represent the best available sources, such as the USGS, the EPA, the Park Service, and many state and county governments. For example, this data I'm showing here from the state of Arkansas. It also includes many data contributions from local governments, such as this example here from the city of San Francisco. And you can see the rich detail that's been contributed by that city and has been compiled into this base map. Uh, here's another example from New York. And here's the city of Washington, DC, and also the city of Boston. Now, this data has come from a variety of different sources, but has been pulled together seamlessly into a multi-resolution base map using those templates that Jack had mentioned. This is a different way to look at crowdsourcing. It's crowdsourcing of authoritative source, not crowdsourcing of sort of amateur dots on a map. But it's bringing together the best collection of people who are measuring and producing maps and data sets already. 
So these base maps, these crowdsource base maps, can be used in many different ways, and I'd like to show you just a few of those. One of the ways that this data can be used is here at data.gov. This is the data.gov viewer. The red dots are the EPA licensed facilities in Region 1, and I can zoom in. You'll see that the detailed base map with the data that is coming from the city of Boston. Now, using this base map, I can use this to provide additional context to the other data that we see here. For example, I can identify any of these EPA facilities. I'll choose one. And now I can view the other information that's associated with that location. So these base maps provide a rich, detailed foundation for adding other layers and doing some additional work. Another place where these base maps are leveraged is here at ArcGIS.com. Anybody can visit this site and they can view a gallery of both maps and applications that have been contributed by Esri and also the user community. And there's thousands and thousands of maps and apps that have been shared here already. This is kind of like Flickr. It's Geo Flickr. People are sharing their data sets and their maps and their apps and changing them from city to city and so on. Just like on Flickr, I can search for content that I'm interested in. Uh, for example, here's a map that's been contributed that's interesting. This is the Washington, D.C. healthy food access map. This is really interesting. The green dots indicate areas that are within one mile distance of fresh food stores, supermarkets. And the red dots indicate areas that exceed that one mile access distance. So we can begin to look at this data and understand patterns about this. Now this map here, I'm looking at in a little viewer, but I can leverage this in many other ways. Here I've embedded that same map into a website which talks about Washington, D.C. healthy food access. So by copying and pasting, I can embed this into my own websites. We also provide free downloadable source code for applications that any developer can use and extend. So these are templates. I'm using that same map in this template, and I can extend this map and modify it as I choose. This is another really interesting example of another template. On the left, we have diabetes rates from the CDC. In the middle, we have obesity rates also from the CDC. And on the right, we have poverty rates from the Census Bureau. Now, the interesting thing is that these maps are locked together, so I can visually begin exploring this. And I notice that there's some interesting things here happening in the southeast. As I zoom in, we'll see the county level data, and I can begin to examine this more closely, and I can also identify individual features to gain more information about all of these maps together. These are coming from three different computers, three different services, so it's a whole new way to visualize comparative and do comparative analysis from government source, census data, CDC data, and so on. Now, another application that we'd like to introduce is this one. This is called the Community Analyst. And this application provides GIS capabilities, but in a very simple and easy to use framework. What I'm looking at here is the diabetes rate by county, again, from the CDC. And what, what I'd like to do is drill in a little closer. So I'm searching for all the counties where the diabetes rate is greater than 12%. So I've filtered the data, and you can see uh, it's pretty interesting results. Here in the southeast, there's a very distinctive feature. Also out here in the west, we can see some counties. These are areas where there's reservations where that population tends to have a high diabetes rate. We can do more with GIS through this application. Here what I've done is I've assembled a complex query. I've brought in several different sources of government data. I've included the uh, diabetes rate, the obesity, the poverty rate, and also the households that are further than one mile from fresh food, and I can adjust the parameters using these little sliders. When I'm satisfied with what I have, I can go ahead and perform the GIS analysis. So in the back end, we're doing a cluster analysis that's collecting all these different layers together and will return the results on a map in a visual way. This is an application that has hundreds and hundreds of data sets together and it's designed to allow exploration by, I wouldn't call them amateurs, but professionals who don't have GIS expertise but want to have access to all this GIS capability. So besides looking at these results in map form, I can also look at them in tabular form and I can also export those to an Excel spreadsheet. So what we've demonstrated here are the many ways that you can leverage this data as services and make it more actionable and understandable. The effort here is to uh, 
make software available in such a way that it's, that it's very easy to use. GIS has been a domain of the professional, but providing open information, in some cases open source software, community analyst software that's very easy to use for anyone to be able to use. And also I'm, I'm proud today to announce a new program, which is that ESRI has decided to make all of its software available to NGOs and nonprofit organizations around the world, as well as to developers who assist or work with them and educational organizations. Thank you. This is a bold move for us. Uh, what we're basically doing is saying our software is going to be available for free for everyone in the world, except for those who can pay. Um, so it's kind of a jokey way to understand it, but that's exactly what we're intending to do. Government agencies or businesses that use it, and we have lots of those, will continue to pay, but everyone else will be able to download it and use it so that they can access that same government data that is increasingly becoming open. So not only are we making the tools much easier to use, but our desktop and server technologies, which are tens of thousands of dollars, can be downloaded and used by, by anyone. We think this is, this is the future of GIS on the web. Uh, it's the future of GIS and computer mapping. Uh, thank you very much for, for a couple minutes. Okay.